We have the pleasure joining us on the line today from UNCW baseball head coach, Randy Hood. Coach, uh, first of all, thank you for joining us today. Uh, let's begin uh, with an update. How are you and your family and friends, your inner circle doing uh, during this pandemic right now? Uh, we're all doing well, as, as well as possible. Um, just kind of hanging out the house. Um, uh, my daughter uh, just finished up her first semester at South Carolina, so uh, she's had to go through uh, – uh, year one of, of dealing with this as well. And uh, so we're, uh, we're uh, taking it in as we can. We're at the house and, um, you know, just trying to get our uh, meetings in when we need to with the uh, athletic staff here at the university and also staying in touch pretty regularly throughout the rest of the semester with um, our players and, and making sure that um, everyone finished up well and everybody finished up exams last week. And uh, so as well as possible. Well, that's good to hear, Coach. And speaking of staying in touch with your staff, uh, how much have you and your coaches been able to stay in touch with your team? And what has been the focus in regards to workouts and in improving their skills as well? Yeah, I mean, since this started, it was all new to everyone kind of starting to um, do the video conferencing and the Zooming and, and things like that. But, uh, you know, once we got into week one, week two, um, we started to really, uh, you know, just basically try to uh, – split the team up in five groups. Um, our five coaches each had about eight guys apiece. And um, I asked those to stay in touch with those guys regularly during the week. And then we would have, um, you know, group Zoom sessions with, uh, you know, smaller groups of the team. And, and then just kind of just daily talk to the staff and make sure we're all on the same page with what's going on and, and, and trying to keep up with recruiting and, and just day-to-day -day things, making sure everybody's all right. It's, it's all new to everybody. Um, I guess we're getting a little accustomed to it, but it's, it's something that we want to hopefully uh, clean up soon and then be able to get back to some normalcy. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more there. And, and baseball being the position it is, uh, next season will be unprecedented really for all spring sports. With the NCAA granting student athletes an additional year of eligibility, do you have a sense of how many – of your seniors might come back and how difficult has it been to kind of manage your roster right now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that everybody in college baseball is dealing with. Uh, I think it was the right thing. I, I know it was the right thing to do um, from the NCA standpoint to, to give those guys an extra a year of opportunity if they choose. Uh, and obviously in our case, we had nine seniors. So, uh, um, you know, we've had to, you know, kind of look at things and determine who's potentially coming back, uh, the incoming guys that we got coming in. And then we also, you know, have to deal with, you know, what's going to happen with the major league draft because, uh, you know, we had three or four guys that potentially would have got drafted decent in the, in the draft. Would it be in five rounds now? Um, it puts some of that in limbo. Um, but we also have some guys, especially some of our older guys that are potentially free agent signs if, if the opportunity arises. So, you know, right now, um, probably six of those nine seniors are, are looking at coming back, uh, depending on what happens. Uh, the other three have decided to kind of move on. They had a couple of jobs set up and, and, and taking some, some academic uh, potential classes and, and grad school. It may be at, at different situations. But, uh, you know, six of the nine are, are looking to come back. Um, hopefully we will get them back and uh, will continue to give us that experience that we really felt like we had a, a good hope hold on with this year's team. And coach kind of wrapping up on the topic of the pandemic impact has also led to the cancellations of many collegiate summer baseball leagues where guys kind of go and work on their game. Uh, what impact do you see that having on college baseball? Well, I mean, everybody in baseball right now is shut down and, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, our guys, and you mentioned earlier, you know, they're doing the best they can to be creative at home with, uh, weight workouts that our um, strength conditioning coaches and athletic trainers are, are providing them and, and trying to get their throwing and their, their skill work in in whatever creative way they can back at home because most places that they've used to uh, to work out in are shut down because of the pandemic. But, uh, you know, summer ball, yeah, it's, uh, it's a situation right now where it looks like most leagues across the country are not going to be, um, be playing. And that's just, uh, you know, uh, a missed opportunity for development in our sport. You know, a lot of our young guys would 
normally go out, get a few more innings under their belt, get some more ABs under their belt, and take that summer experience and bring it back to campus in the fall. And that's something that, you know, everybody across baseball is going to be missing out on pretty much. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll make us to have to really spend, you know, a lot more time evaluating, working, and getting guys into, um, you know, some sense of uh, – uh, shape and and development in the fall if if we get back and when we get back and being able to to work out. Coach, let's talk about the 2020 season briefly. Even though it was a brief uh, 2020 season, and it was your first season as the head coach, and it was a strong start for the Seahawks. 11 and five start, including a three game road sweep of SEC opponent Kentucky. Were you pleased with the way the season was going, and what was the potential of this year's team? Well, uh, you know, we, we felt like we had a chance to uh, be another championship caliber program. Uh, we did. We got off to a 3-1 start the first two weekends and then, uh, you know, really just basically had a brutal midweek game at NC State. <laughs> uh, they beat us 11-0 and, uh, you know, we couldn't have played any worse and they played as good as you could possibly play. And a day later, we're packing up and heading to Kentucky and playing a SEC series on the road. The weather was um, going to be brutal the first two days there in the low 30s. Um, but I thought our guys got there and just mentally and, and physically just toughed it out and just played great baseball all weekend. We had two shutouts on Friday and Saturday, great pitching performances from Zarian Sharp and Landon Root, and then a great game on Sunday to finish out the sweep. And, uh, you know, came back. Um, didn't have a midweek game. It was rained out. Uh, didn't play great against Memphis on the weekend. Ended up getting a Sunday win uh, against a good club. They were good. And then the Wednesday before everything was shut down, um, we come and have one of the best college baseball games you could watch. I mean, 2-2 going into the ninth. We get a couple guys on and then get a walk-off three-run homer for Matt Suggs to beat a nationally ranked East Carolina. And then, um, you know, we were 11 and five at the time, and I felt we were really starting to play really good. Our defense was coming around. Um, our, our starting pitching between, you know, Root, Sharp, and Giselle had been solid, and and then our bullpen guys with Nick Bruno, Braden Gorham, Adam Smith, Blake Deathers, those guys have been awesome. But, uh, you know, it it is what it is. It it hurts because our guys have put a lot of work in, just like everybody else across the country. I thought our league, I mean. I think I looked at it. We were 77 and 62 overall in non-conference play and 52 and 17 at home. I mean, if you look at we had seven out of nine teams on a winning streak when everything was, was, was closed down. And College of Charleston, Northeastern, James Madison were all, you know, playing very well. And, and you know, the other teams were right at 500. And uh, just, uh, you know, I thought this was a year that the league had a, and, and most years, but this year especially, I thought we had a really good chance to be a multiple bid league. And uh, it just hurts uh, to not know what would have possibly happened with our league as far as being able to see it play out. Absolutely, indeed. And, and what also has to hurt kind of leads to my next question. Uh, you talked about that East Carolina game being a rival. 5-2, to two, the walk-off three-run homer by Matt Suggs. Uh, how difficult was it to have the excitement of that victory and then 24 hours later realize that the season was over? Was there a hint that that game that you guys were playing might be your last game, or uh, was there any talk leading up to that game that this might be it, or, or did everything just kind of snowball into a shock uh, after that result? It's, it's kind of it's kind of crazy how it all started happening, but you started hearing a few things that week, two weeks before, about the, the – the pandemic and, and the virus and, you know, you never think it's really going to always get to a certain point like it has. Um, but yeah, that day on Wednesday, um, you start hearing a few more things potentially happen, maybe potentially weekend series um, still being played, but not with fans. Um, and then during batting practice that day, um, we're sitting there and coach God, one of East Carolina came over to me and said, he just got a call from Columbia and it said that, um, they were not going to be able to make the trip down to Greenville that weekend. So he's trying to figure out who to play. And I'm start thinking, well, can, you know, we bring them back to Wilmington and play, you know, Memphis and then have like a three team round robin. And we're trying to figure all that out as the night goes on. I mean, again, it was a great college baseball game. Um, we win it at the end. And then, you know, uh, 10 o'clock the next morning, um, I'm sitting in a head coach's meeting with our staff uh, and athletic staff and administrators. 
we're talking about potentially uh, playing games this weekend with, with no fans, maybe just parents. Um, East Tennessee State was on their way to our place already, busing. By 1 o'clock Thursday afternoon, I was told to call them and tell them to turn around. Uh, we would not play. Um, and then later that day, the NCA and everybody comes out saying that the spring season was, was pr pretty much canceled from an NCA standpoint. And then Friday at 1 o'clock, I met with our team and told them the season was over. So, I mean, it happened from Wednesday night's walk-off at 11 o'clock to Friday at 1, the season's over that quick less than 36 hours. So it was, uh, it was pretty, it had hurt a lot. We had a, um, a lot of crying and, and, and things like that because um, we had such a, a tight group and, and an older group and, and a group that's put a lot of time in it. But, um, you know, we've, we've recovered a little bit, but yet yeah, still hurts. I'm sure coach. And what do you think, you know, young men can learn or young student athletes in general can learn from, a situation like this or and what even for all you know even for you what can you learn as well from something you know like this happening uh, to you guys that's so heartbreaking well at first you you, you kind of think it's all about you but it's really not it's about what's going on in the country and what's best for uh, everybody and um, you know the baseball part the, the sport part we'll get it back and um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, make amends with the people that were able to, to miss time and, and allow them to get it back. But, um, you know, it's just, it just shows you that, um, you know, at, at certain times we've got to all come together as not only a community, a, a campus, a state, but as a country and, and, and come together and, and figure out a way to do what's right and what's best for everybody's um, health and wellness and, and well being. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's put a lot of things in perspective, not only for myself, but our, our players and everybody associated with UNCW and, and I'm assuming CAA and, and other universities across the, the country that, um, you know, um, you, you don't take anything for granted. Um, you, each day we get the opportunity to go out there is special. And, you know, I, I got a text from Mike Glavin um, Saturday and he said, you know, um, we, we'd be in our series right now in game two, probably battling out. He said, it's 38 degrees up here in Boston. And I said, it wouldn't matter. I, I, I'd take it any day over what we're dealing with right now. But, um, you know, you, you just you never take it for granted. And I think you're going to find out when everybody gets back into a, um, a, a more normal routine, um, people are really going to respect each day and, and each hour that you get an opportunity to not only to just compete in, in college athletics, but just live and, and be, a, you know, uh, in, in a much better state than what we're all dealing with right now. Very well said, Coach. And uh, you, speaking of your program, it won its second straight CA baseball championship in 2019, beating Elon 6-5 to in 10 innings. It was a thrilling game indeed. And it was the final season for your longtime mentor, Mark Scaffs. So how spe special was it for the Seahawks to win the title in his last year? It was basically a storybook ending. Yeah, we um, we didn't play Seahawk baseball very well for the first uh three quarters of the season. And then, um, you know, whatever switched, uh, maybe just being our backs against the wall, the program that we have, the tradition we have, our guys said, you know what, we, we've got to figure out a way to play better baseball. And we started playing better there at the back end and, and got on a good roll. And um, again, it was not easy. Um, we had some really good teams, some really good pitchers we had to go through last year in the league. And, uh, you know, just for Coach Scaff's um, situation, uh, the, the amount of time, the effort, the um, commitment, um, the loyalty that he's given to the university and, and allow him to, to walk off um, the CA championship field holding another trophy was, was really special and get us, get us to a regional again, our 10th regional, which was another big number for our program. And, uh, you know, again, uh, it, it was special. Our guys played great. Uh, we played the back half the last three or four weeks the way we kind of thought we would play most of the year but sometimes you just things happen but um yeah it was it was a special moment uh to send him off like that and um and you know hopefully he'll remember that and I know he will we talk about it all the time and uh, we still see coach Scaff a lot around campus and uh you know hopefully we'll we'll continue to do the things that we've done in the last two decades is win a lot of baseball games uh, you know, win a lot of championships and continue to develop young men to, to 
you know, be professionals in whatever career they end up being in, uh, whether it's baseball or at the majority of them somewhere else in the workforce. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been a really good run. What has been the biggest adjustment for you taking over as head coach? And was there any advice that Coach Scaff gave you before you officially took over the reins? Um, I was lucky and fortunate that Coach Scaff gave me a lot of freedom to do a lot of things over the 18 years that I've been there and uh, or here, excuse me. But, um, you know, just the, I'd say the biggest thing is, is just, um, you know, having more meetings and more speaking engagements and things like that, which, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you got to prep for them a little bit and you got to feel comfortable doing those things. But, uh, you know, that, that has definitely increased and just the amount of, uh, the, you have to pay a lot more attention to the whole aspect of the program instead of, you know, being assistant, I'm more focused in certain areas as a head coach. You gotta, you gotta really have a, a good keen sense of awareness of everything going on and, and bottom line uh, decisions fall back on me and, 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 and how the program goes about their business, you know, is reflection on how I'm running it. So, you know, um, just little things like that. But overall, I think, you know, Coach Scaff, like I said, gave me a great opportunity to develop, um, you know, while I was here, gave me a lot of responsibilities and freedom. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate that now looking back. And Coach, speaking of taking over the program, you know, a big responsibility this season in your first year is the fact that you guys would have hosted the CAA championship. And here we are in mid-May and we're not preparing for it anymore. Uh, how weird, how kind of odd is that uh, for you? Uh, it's very odd. Um, you know, we were excited. Our, our campus, um, our athletic staff were excited, our players, um, all our fans. I mean, we, we do – our, our community does a great job supporting uh, baseball. Uh, and uh, when you get a chance to host the CAA, which we've done a lot in the past, um, you know, we take it. Um, and, and we really want to do a great job of representing not only the university, but our conference and put on a good event. And we, we, we always do. So, uh, you know, we were looking forward to it. And, um, you know, you know, we were hoping, again, like I said at the beginning, having a championship caliber type um team this year we were we were hoping to win our third straight here at home how sweet that would have been if if uh we would have had the opportunity but uh you know we'll continue to work and uh hopefully um down the road um get an opportunity to host again and 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 when we do we'll, we'll put on a good show and and hopefully be a big part of it all the way through the four or five days that it's held Absolutely. And wrapping up today with UNCW baseball coach Randy Hood. And coach, we can't let you go without asking about Michael Jordan. And the reason why we're asking about Michael Jordan is because millions of people obviously watching his documentary right now, The Last Dance. And many people aren't aware that you were a teammate of his when he played baseball for the Birmingham Barons during his time during that time where he switched over to baseball. So what was that experience like and what was it like being teammates with with someone like him? Well, uh, you're correct. Since this documentary has started over the last three weeks, um, I've had a lot of uh, requests to do uh, Michael Jordan stories and interviews and things like that. But, um, you know, that, that was a – and I just – I talked to um, – a television station yesterday and I got a radio thing tomorrow at, at 10 o'clock as well. But, um, you know, it was a great, um, opportunity to just get involved and be a part of something that was, uh, really unusual. Um, you know, at the time, Michael Jordan was the greatest basketball player in the country, in the world. And, um, and then to be a part of it as, uh, as a baseball player, to see him come in there and work and try to, you know, hone his ability to, to, to work his way up through the minor leagues well, it was pretty neat to see how it all with the fans and, and the media and, and how just, and I don't mean to say a circus, but it was crazy. Like, I mean, it was, it was literally every night a sellout, uh, every night 50 to 150 media type credentials being uh, issued. Um, you know, we travel on, on a bus uh, and we get into hotels at two, three o'clock in the morning and there'd be four or 500 people at hotels um, waiting for us to get off the, not us, but waiting for Michael to get off the bus and things like that. But uh, it was a great experience. Um, it was a learning experience, learning how to deal with a lot of things. And, um, you know, just so many stories. I and mean, like I, like I told the guy yesterday, uh, you know, it went, 
so fast in a way that I really never even asked him for an autograph until the last day of the season um, because it just – one didn't feel normal asking a teammate, even though he was a basketball player that I really loved watching to play basketball growing up from little all the way up. But, um, yeah, it was pretty neat. A lot of stories, a lot of memories. And, uh, you know, I look back at it now and think how special it really was. Indeed. And our last question for today, what was uh, – in regards to the – Michael Jordan and being his teammate, what was he like as a teammate? You know, we see the portraying in the documentary that all the extra baseball cuts. I mean, he, he obviously looked like he wanted to perfect his game. So what was he like as a teammate in the locker room, uh, you know, either away from the field or off the cameras or away from the media? Um, from a baseball standpoint, he, he came to work every day and got after it and put in a lot of extra work because he knew he had to catch up. He, he, had to, he had to work to get better and not to embarrass himself. And, you know, you're, you're, the, you're the most iconic athlete in the world at that time and uh, at the top of NBA basketball and greatest player at that time to play. And you now he's going to play a sport where you fail seven out of ten times and you're still successful. And, you know, he – he came into work. He, he did, you know, get all these extra swings. He worked out in the field. Uh, he, you know, did everything from a base running standpoint to learn as much as possible. And, um, you know, just in the clubhouse, he was another guy, even though, you know, you, you keep realizing that he's not another guy. He's, he's Michael Jordan. But, uh, you know, he, he didn't treat us in baseball the way you see some of the stuff in basketball where he was demanding and, and really, um, you know, just – pushing his teammates. He was more a part of what we did, part of learning how baseball is, part of minor league life. And he just kind of, you know, you know, was there every day getting his work in and trying to trying to be a better baseball player. Um, and then, you know, outside of the baseball games, you had the rest of the stuff that Michael Jordan brought to minor league baseball with all the fans and everything like that. But, uh, you know, great, great teammate. Uh, uh, I love going out to eat because he took care of the bill most of the time. <laughs> and, uh, and little perks like that, you know, I, I have a few stories. I, 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 the, the coolest one was the first time we went out and, um, and played basketball on our off days, the few off days we got, he wanted to play basketball and, you know, why wouldn't most of us want to go play pickup with the best basketball player in the world. But, uh, the first day we were out there, um, um, I'm, I'm playing on one of the teams and, uh, you know, I've got a pair of old New Balance that I brought with me and uh, running around in those. He didn't say anything during the day, but the next day going back to the locker room, I walk in there, I look over, there's a Nike box sitting in my uh, locker and um, I go over and open them up and it's a pair of powder blue Jordan 9s and I kind of look over at him and he just kind of is shaking his head and he goes, uh, don't ever wear those New Balance anymore. That's, that's what you need to wear. And I shook my head and said, yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, just little neat things like that. You know, he didn't have to do that, but um, he did. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of other little things that um, throughout the summer that, you know, like, like I could say, I could tell a lot of stories, but um, it was pretty cool. Coach, that's an awesome story to share. Thank you so much for sharing uh, that story with us and also your season and how your team is uh, dealing with this uh, current pandemic. And thank you for stopping by. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and we look forward to seeing you and the Seahawks back on the field, hopefully shorter or sooner rather than later. Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate it.